Hey guys, Youngblood with you for your Should You Buy video on the new RSI Perseus. Now if you're not familiar with the ship, it was just released for concept sale today and it's another large combat ship. And again, it's a ship that was used by the UEE Navy, but this one is a civilian version being released for militias and whatnot. Now, knowing it's a large combat, um, you know, in size and in role, um, you should you really shouldn't be too surprised to see that the price of the ship is $600 with all new money or $675 if you're going to be using in-game credits. So yes, it's an expensive ship. And since it's been a while, I'll go ahead and give my standard boilerplate disclaimer that, um, you know, that this will be available to be purchased in the game. So no one needs to purchase this. And while it is technically pledging support for the game and you're getting a ship in return, I talk about buying it because you're making a decision on what you get in return for your pledge. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the ship details and overall thoughts on what we have here. Uh, the Perseus is 100 meters long, it's 50 meters wide, and it's 21 meters tall. And based on the price and the size, most people will be comparing this ship to the Polaris, the Hammerhead, and the Nautilus. But honestly, while you may want to compare the Polaris to the, and the Perseus, it's not really apples to apples here. Um, the Polaris is a small capital ship, and thus comes with capital class radar and capital class power plants, as well as having 28 size 10 torpedoes, as well as bringing a hangar along with it. And even though the Polaris is said to be lighter armed for a capital ship, my guess is that it's still going to be a better armored than any of these other ships that we talk about today are. So if you're really looking for a comparison on which uh, option in large, not capital, combat ships are right for you, then you need to look at the Hammerhead, the Nautilus, and the Perseus. Uh, the Nautilus is a mine layer, shouldn't even really be in this conversation. But for some reason, CIG ended up putting the, uh, you know two size 7 weapons on that man turret. So it is relevant, unfortunately. Um, the size difference here between the three is fairly minimal. Um, the Hammerhead is probably the closest at 115 meters by 75 by 16. So it's longer and wider and less tall. Uh, as far as the speed, the Perseus is slated to go up to 92 SCM, which is slow even for a big ship. And we know the Hammerhead now will go over 100 pretty easily. Um, the weaponry on this ship is where things are really actually pretty interesting though. Because you have two man turrets, one on the top, one on the bottom of the ship. Uh, and that's where the main armament really comes from, with two size 7 weapons on each turret for a total of four. That is a ton of firepower. And as we've seen in the game and from the Q&A on the Ares ships, the two main advantages of the larger weapons is the longer range by a lot uh, and better penetration values once armor comes into the game. Penetration is important to consider here because the ship is really designed as a sub-capital ship killer. And those larger ships are going to have more armor, and more armor means smaller rounds may be useless against them. For example, a Hornet size 3s might not be able to pen penetrate a larger armor set, but the size 7 could penetrate and do a lot of damage. Uh, in addition to the main cannons, you also have two remote turrets and that have two size 3 Gatlings on them. Um, these are designed to be a little bit flexible and really either work uh, in a point defense manner where they could be automated to protect against incoming threats such as missiles and torpedoes, but could also be entered into as a remote turret to allow a gunner on the bridge to shoot at targets of their choice. Now, it's not a ton of extra firepower, but it is a nice perk. And in addition to the actual guns, the Perseus also has two torpedo tubes where it can launch a total of 20 size 5 torpedoes. Now, size 5 isn't huge, um, and it is more in line with what can be carried on the Harbinger or the Gladiator, um, but they are still relevant, and 20 of them is a pretty good number of them too. Now, if we compare the weaponry on these ships, um, we need to try and find a consistent model to compare DPS. Um, and we only have one size 7 in the game right now, and that's the M9A uh, laser cannon. Uh, and that weapon has a DPS of 1742. Now, it looks like where the guns on the turrets are probably size 7 ballistic cannons, um, but that's hard to tell. But if we go down to size 4s, where we have the M6A and the C788, um, we see a multiplier of about a 1.25 for DPS increase from the laser cannon to the ballistic cannon. And if we take that up to the M9A, which has a DPS of 1742, and up it by 1.25, we get a DPS per weapon of about 2178. And with four of those on the Perseus, you're looking at roughly a DPS of 81, or 8712. Um, and when you add in the four size three Gatlings, that takes it up another 1920 to give a total DPS of guns alone at 10,632. A little bit fuzzy math there, but just to give you a ballpark and we're making some assumptions, but that's all we can really do right now. 
The Nautilus, though, with a size um, with four size three Gatlings and the two size seven cannons, would be about six thousand two hundred and seventy six. So about uh, roughly about four hundred less than what's on the. Or I'm sorry, about four thousand four hundred or so less than what's on the actual Perseus. And the Hammerhead, though, with twenty four size four Gatlings, would be closer to sixteen thousand one hundred and twenty eight. So about six thousand above what the actual Perseus could bring. So overall, the Hammerhead has by far the highest total damage output of these three. Though its missiles are smaller and they're not included in the calculation, but neither are the torpedoes on the Perseus or the mines or the sentries on the Nautilus. They all do things very differently, so there's no real good way to compare them all apples to apples. The other factor here is how they're actually going to be used in a fight. The Perseus main turrets appear um, that they will likely have some limited firing arcs, such as the top turret not being able to turn around completely because you're going to be able to shoot the bridge at that point. So you probably have somewhere between 180 to 200 degrees range of motion, maybe a little bit more, um, or so, and that's specifically about the top turret. The bottom turret, though, doesn't really appear to have that same issue, so I expect greater mobility on that turret. The placement on the turrets is okay, because I think with where they're actually at, it looks like you could probably both land shots on a target far enough off um, that's on the same plane as you are. You basically have to level it out. Um, but if the target is too far you know, above or below the plane that your ship is actually on, you're not going to get a firing solution on both of the targets. Additionally, you have a top turret uh, and a bottom turret. So they're not necessarily going to be able, and I'm talking about the size threes there, they're not really going to be able to engage the same targets hardly at all because one's kind of sticking off the back. They're more practically placed as uh, point defense systems. So in all practicality, you have about half of your effective firepower able to engage the same targets at the same time unless you're in the right situation. If you compare that to the hammerhead though, and I would say you can realistically have about five of the six turrets on the same target. You will never have six, but it's pretty easy to get five. Um, so you have a much better firing solution based on that design. Um, the Nautilus is much more limited, and honestly, I've just included it this far based on it actually having size sevens, but honestly, the weapons just don't hold up and it's just more reliant on the mines and the sentries, so at this point forward we're really going to just focus on the Hammerhead versus the Perseus. Here's how some engagements would go in my mind between these, based on some major assumptions. If the Perseus was able to get the Hammerhead lined up effectively, it would be able to bring all of its main weapons to bear to hit from a range of likely somewhere between 1.5 to 2 times of what the Hammerhead could reach out and do, meaning the Alpha Strike could cause enough critical issues by the time that the Hammerhead actually could bring its weaponry to bear it may already be too late. Now, if this was a surprise engagement and the targets were very close to each other to start um, before the firing actually started going, I think the Hammerhead actually wins though because it's got greater speed and great, better maneuverability, I'm assuming, and with better weapons coverage. Now, that assumption is based on the armor that gets implemented and the penetration value of weapons. I think that also depends dramatically on the weaponry on the Hammerhead because I think when I equip mine I have 24 Revenant Gatling guns and it does a very good job and those do a pretty good job of penetrating. But if you're sticking with the stock Rhinos, it may not be enough to eat through the shields that will eventually do damage before the larger size 7 weapons start taking their toll. Um, the closer engagement would also likely mean that the size 5 torpedoes may not be able to lock based on being too close, those being on the Perseus, but on the Hammerhead where you have a little more flexibility in how you kit out your missiles, um, you could potentially have the missile multiplier available so you're actually able to use those in addition to your turrets. I think in most situations though, the detection ranges on these ships is far out enough that the Hammerhead is going to have a tough time closing the distance to win the day, meaning the Perseus is typically going to be the ship winning this engagement. But <laughs> that's purely head to head. And if you think about the engagements that are likely going to happen, you are typically going to have a fleet or at least a couple escort fighters with you. And I think the Perseus is very limited against fighters. Um, the size seven turret is a sub cap killer. It's designed to go against large ships. And while you can land shots against fighters and it will do a ton of damage, it's going to be very, very hard to actually hit them. Two turrets um, as protection with size threes is going to be somewhat effective, um, but to fit, depending on the ships, it may just not be enough firepower or placement to actually protect it. The hammerhead is more of an area denial tool, and it can be it can better deal with the smaller threats like fighters. So if that battle turns out to be a few fighters along with the Perseus and the hammerhead. 
That fight becomes a different story, where the Perseus may have to deal with the fighters as kind of being pests, uh, while the Hammerhead could potentially get engaged more intelligently. I'd say independently, the Perseus beats the Hammerhead. But without much work to get a fleet flying, the Hammerhead could likely win that and end up being the ship that survives. Now, aside from the weaponry and the combat models, the Perseus has two main thrusters, two VTOL thrusters, and 12 fixed maneuvering thrusters. Those fixed thrusters activate faster than the, maneuver, the uh, kind of gimbaled maneuvering thrusters. So it will correct the ship's direction faster, but it will be less precise in its movement. Now, I do worry a little bit about the susceptibility to take the ship down by taking an engine offline when there's only two of them. Now, a nice perk to the Perseus is that it does have a cargo area with a ramp or an elevator that will allow you to use an Ursa rover. Um, so I think that does potentially open up some value in gameplay. Maybe a little bit limited, but you could drop your ship, you put your team in a ground vehicle and go get into a different type of combat. Now, I do appreciate that the Perseus has a small crew requirement, really being pretty well operated by just three people, where the Hammerhead, at least until AI Blades come into play, and we know you're not going to be able to automate all of your turrets, requires really seven people to be fully crewed up. Now, the actual crew number on the Perseus is six, but you can definitely get by with less. Now, inside the ship, you have a habitation area for the crew, a captain's quarters, and a mess hall. On the bridge, you have access to escape pods in the engineering area with most of your component access. Uh, the design of the ship overall, very cool, and it's very aggressive looking. And I do appreciate that center-mounted bridge that appears to have a pretty neat design for kind of the visibility and just how it sits on top of the ship. Uh, it also does have a docking collar for access to stations that support larger ships but don't have pads or potentially for boarding parties into other vessels. Looking at the components, you have a medium radar, two medium computers, two large power plants and shield generators, which means that you match up with the hammerhead perfectly, with the only difference between those and the Nautilus being that the Nautilus brings an extra shield. Um, so overall, that's kind of your basic rundown of the Perseus and where we stand with it with our knowledge today. But based on all of that, should you buy the Perseus? The short or easy answer is probably not. You know, most people are going to say that this is very expensive and it's not in-game. Though, if you're thinking about waiting, it is worth pointing out that it is not ever going to be cheaper than it is now. That's not to try and tell you you need to jump out and do it. It's just calling it out as a factor you need to consider. Now, the reason for probably not was because I think it's a very niche ship. Really built for people that want a larger combat ship with some big weapons, but more importantly, that actually have relevant targets to use it against. I think where this is going to excel today uh, in game is going to be against ships like the Hammerhead, the 890, the Carrick, and you know, it'll, it'll pop a Caterpillar really easy, but they're not really hard to bring down. But how often do you really have to take down people in those ships? It's not that often, and against an NPC, it doesn't ever really happen. You know, ships that are big and can be hard to take down, there's finally something that makes it easier to do this with. Um, now, the times where you actually need to do that, again, are going to be pretty limited, and while I think the bounties will change over time, it will be much more cost-effective to run something like a Vanguard or a Hammerhead, and that definitely gets the job done where the game is today. Now, granted, having all weaponry controlled by three people instead of six on the Hammerhead means that, you know, twice the profits as far as what gets shared out if you can get the job done. I think the ability to land and take a vehicle with you is helpful, but I don't think it's that much of a perk. Now, if you're looking long term, the ship does have more value, and it could be something that is good for purchase if you want to use it down the line and you don't mind ponying up for it now. I personally would probably wait, but I think there's value, you know, that you could you could probably make that value proposition. Um, but, but you do have to realize that you're taking it at faith that, uh, you know, you're going to have those smaller or those bigger ships as part of your bounty missions and just the kind of stuff that the game throws at you uh, to be relevant. Um, but overall, if you're talking about quantities of ships engaging you, something like the Hammerhead would do a better job. Overall, I would say that this is a disruptor in the large combat ship class, and I expect that it has, you know, the better design and the appeal of the bigger guns is going to mean that we see a lot of Hammerheads getting melted as a result. But I honestly think the Hammerhead is a better value as you have more situations to use it, and if you're spending real-world money on buying a ship, using it is the critical part of it. For example, the Hammerhead is better suited to being a fleet protector because you can throw up that fighter screen, um, so it becomes a good defender, whereas I see the Perseus being more of the hunter and thus be, might attract people 
not as across the board, but people like in mercenary organizations or even piracy organizations, um, places that you know where you could maybe take down you know bigger and juicier targets. Um, I, I think it just depends. I think that you know Hammerhead becomes I'm protecting my fleet, where Perseus is I'm coming after your ship. Overall, I think it's a really cool ship, and I think it's going to be effective in the game, assuming you know when to pull it out and use it. So that's basically it on the Perseus for now. As we get more information, be sure to keep an eye on the channel, and I'll be covering it for sure. If you have questions, please get them into the comments. Uh, make sure you consider supporting my channel on Patreon, and you can find links to that on the description to this video. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and take care.